You know, when it comes to, you want a marriage that lasts forever. Like we want we want our boy to have the perfect girl. Good luck with that, by the way. Uh, because perfection is not going to happen in this, and your boy isn't perfect. Let me, let me tell you. If you don't know, let me tell you. We're all human beings. And human beings have flaws. And sometimes, sometimes things work, and sometimes things don't work. But let me tell you, when a young man and a young woman are old enough to get married, that actually means they're old enough to make their own choice. Let me repeat myself. When they're old enough to get married, they're old enough to make their own choice. And maybe you don't like their choice. And your job and my job as parents is to advise them and say, I don't think this is a good choice. I think that this is, you could do better. I, and, and you're, by the way, as a parent, I think I'm always going to say you could do better. I'm always going to say that. But maybe, and maybe you think this is a mistake. But if your son is 25 years old, your daughter is 30 years old, and she wants to make a mistake, that halal mistake is way better. That halal mistake is way, way, and it, maybe things don't work out in three years. That's still better. That's still better than you refusing, because I have seen enough cases, I don't talk in theory, I'm talking based on what I've seen, the conversations I've had with people, with real Muslim families around the world, especially around the United States and Canada, where people are, this, this man comes and says, I want to marry this girl. The father says, no, you're not from the same country, you're not from the same culture or whatever. You can't get married to my daughter, or the other way around. But these two are still already emotionally attached. So they're texting each other, talking to each other, hanging out with each other, having dinner with each other. Parents don't know. Five, six years go by, they're refusing other proposals. Then the girl is forced to marry somebody else, and she's still talking to the guy. And all of this was that, that evil, that evil, that this whoever she married didn't deserve this. He didn't deserve this. But all of that evil was created by the stubbornness of parents who didn't realize that their children live in a different time. Where, where allowing marriage first is a bigger priority than anything else. You have to understand, when these ayat came down, they came down in Medina. And the Arab people, are of, of the time especially, were very tribal. They wanted to maintain their nasab. At all cost, you maintain your lineage. Lineage is a very, very big deal. So marrying outside your tribe was not a common thing. But now the Sahaba are in Medina. And they're outcasts from their own city anyway. And a lot of the people that were in Medina, they've accepted Islam, so they're outcasts from their own tribes. So there are going to be marriages outside of their culture. You have to understand, it's not just an Arab marrying an Arab. This is a Hudali marrying someone from Ta'if, or somebody, you know, there's all this inter-tribal marriage happening, which is a big deal to them. It's as big a deal today than a Pakistani marrying a Bangladeshi, astaghfirullah al You know? Or a Lebanese marrying an Egyptian. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. How can that be? You know? This, this was a big deal to them. But Allah said, no, forget all of that. Just make sure that marriage itself becomes easy. Just that much. And Allah will take care of the rest. 